Hello, everyone. I know we've just met, and this may seem a bit soon, but I love you. I feel like I know you already. It's like we have some kind of connection. I don't know all the things that we share in common, but I'm going to go on a whim, and I'm going to say that we share some dreams. I know that you want to be successful. I know you want to be respected, and I know that you want to be valued. I know that you also want to be seen and heard. Am I right? I'm also going to go so far as to say that many of you here, just like me, want to see the world looking differently than it does today. I want to live in a world where we don't value people based on what country they come from or their status in life. I want to live in a world where we stop throwing people out. I want to live in a world where we don't deny people of their dignity. I want to live in a world where there's no them and no us, just us standing together in our humanity. I also want to live in a world where the golden rule of all religions is practiced. Treat your brother as you treat yourself. The thing is, I'm an impatient girl, and I don't want to wait too long. So I do what I can do in my own little way to create the world in which I want to live. The Lebanese philosopher Khalil Gibran, in his renowned book, The Prophet, said, you give little when you give of your possessions. It's when you give of yourself that you truly give. I believe when you give your time to another human being, you create an experience for them. You create a memory that may warm their heart on a cold winter's night. So for the last couple of years, I've been traveling to developing country, countries to spend time volunteering with orphans. It's very easy to look at the big picture and think that there's so many people suffering in the world that these visits don't make a difference. But then I stop and I remind myself, Shifa, you can only do small things with big love. So, in 2013, I went to Karachi in Pakistan. I was to spend time at an orphanage called Sirat al-Jannah, which in Arabic means the pathway to heaven. The owner of this orphanage was an English woman married to a Pakistani man. A little over more than 25 years ago, when she got to the country, she found that the demand for the orphanages completely outweighed the supply. So she decided to start one of her own. I don't think that I've ever met a more selfless woman. I was supposed to go to the orphanage with my mother, but then my friends heard about the trip. They decided to join. They told their cousins, and they came along too. See, that's the thing about goodness. It's infectious, like a disease spreading from one person to the other, spreading more goodness. In my experience, it's very rare for the person to hear about the opportunity to do good and turn it down. Everybody wants to get involved with acts of kindness. They simply don't know where to start. So we had difficulty finding the orphanage in the back streets of Karachi. But when we finally did, it was a very rundown building that was over three floors in a back alley. These orphanages very rarely get assistance, financial assistance from the government. They run solely off private donations from do-gooders. There were times, the owner of the orphanage told me, when she doesn't know how she'll make it through the end of the month to feed the 140 children that she has in her care. When we finally got inside the orphanage, we bonded with the girls very quickly. We put them into groups, and we asked them all to draw a picture of something that they loved. Every single one of them drew a picture of the orphanage. The lady standing beside the orphanage is the owner, their mother, as they call her. It was really beautiful to see the girls playing, squabbling, fighting, in the same way any sisters would. They were perfectionists when it came to their artwork, not a single line out of place. There was one girl with the most piercing green eyes I've ever seen. All she wanted to do was be cuddled and hugged. Along the road of life, you will meet human beings who will humble you to the core of your being. 
The owner of this orphanage was one of them. She has dedicated her life to these children, even marrying her two sons who live in the UK to orphan girls that she has raised. She witnesses horrific scenes every month and never gets tired and never gives up. There are times when she arrives to the orphanage in the morning only to find that a cardboard box has been left on the doorstep with a baby inside. There was even one time when she opened the box only to find a baby had been eaten alive by rats. Shortly after I left Karachi, one of the girls in this picture that I was playing with was kidnapped. Kidnapped by people who wanted to adopt her but didn't get permission. The owner of the orphanage tiresomely traveled the whole country to get her back. Thankfully, with the help of the police, she did. Needless to say, my time in Pakistan was heart-opening as well as it was eye-opening. Over the last few years, I've traveled to India numerous times. I always find myself going back to New Delhi, to the House of Missionaries, the religious community of Mother Teresa's orphanage home. This is home to many girls who have been abandoned by their families and picked up by the police. A lot of them are physically and mentally challenged. When they arrive to the orphanage, they are treated with dignity and respect. Oh, I didn't show you the rest of them. Okay, so this is the Mother Teresa orphanage here. Um, when they get to the orphanage, they're treated with love and respect. When I remind myself when I go there that it's 2018 and there are many children around the world who are living without anyone or anything, rejected, unwanted, unloved, if it wasn't for the wonderful work that these orphanages do. This is uh, Sister Tina. She's a disciplinarian. She was very quick to tell me that day that my jeans had holes in them and that they needed mending as soon as possible. <laughs> I didn't wear those again when I went back. So in 2015, I headed off to Tanzania in Africa. The objective was to summit Mount Kilimanjaro. In the lead up to this expedition, we decided to raise money for a project that aimed to make the uh, orphanage economically sustainable. We were going to purchase a herd of cows. The cows would give milk to the children, the cows would have babies, and then they could sell each cow for around $100. After our summit, we came down to Moshi Town and got time to spend at the Kilimanjaro Orphanage Center. There was one particular girl that stands out in my memory. She was a teenager, and our job that day was to cut vegetables for lunch. As we were cutting potatoes, she asked me, Shifa, what kind of music do you like? I paused for a second, naively thinking that a girl in the middle of Moshi Town surely would not share the same musical taste as I am. I said, maybe let me say Michael Jackson. That's a safe bet, right? Everybody knows Michael Jackson. By the time, before I had time to even answer, she screams out, I love Chris Brown, those hoes ain't loyal. And she literally starts doing her own rendition, twerking and all, with a potato in one hand and a knife in another. I love Chris Brown too. That moment, two different girls, two different cultures, two different backgrounds, but yet we were united in our humanity. These human connections are the thing that matter most in life, and that's the reason I do what I do. What I've learned on these trips could never be learned in a book or in the internet. For anybody seeking that human connection, I urge you to try volunteering. You will learn more than you could ever imagine. Volunteering isn't just about wanting to help people. It's the love that you feel when you're working with like-minded people on a mission that's bigger than yourself. Volunteering isn't just about food and shelter. It's about our values as a human being. Volunteering, to me, is restoring faith and hope to those who have lost theirs along the journey of life. So, they say charity begins at home. 
You don't need to travel to far off destinations to make a difference in the world. Let me tell you just how simple and easy this thing could be. Last week was one of my best friend's birthdays. So a couple of days before her big day, she calls me up. Shifa, this year on my birthday, I don't want to buy a fancy gift. I want to do something to give back to humanity. Can you think of something and let me know? So I thought it over the next day, and I said to myself, with winter coming up, what's the most practical and simplest thing we can do? I told her we can put together some winter care packages and distribute them in Doha to those less fortunate. In winter, who doesn't want a beanie cap, scarves, a phone card to call home, vitamin C and Vicks? So that's what we did. We went to the supermarket, we bought the items, we bought boxes to put them in, and then we went back to my friend's house to pack them. We turned her living room into a factory conveyor belt. We sectioned everything off and boxed it up. Before we knew it, her nieces and nephews were there to help us, and then a couple of other friends joined in too. So we had a whole little gang of goodness. We had so much joy and fun that day, and that was even before the boxes had been given out. So the deception that I have hoped to decode today is that being a volunteer doesn't need to be this difficult, untouchable, ambiguous thing. It's simply small things with big love consistently. I, get, I suppose Mother Teresa got it right all those years ago when she said, the problem with the world today is that we've drawn the circle of our family too small. Today, I ask you to reconsider who you put in that circle, to draw it a whole lot bigger, and to include all of us. Thank you.